Hi, I'm Joe Carswell with Teach Construction, and this lesson is all about safety gear that you'll wear on the job site to keep yourself safe, commonly called PPE. So let's get into it. PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment, and there are a lot of different types that will keep a certain part of your body safe while you're working. It's important that we make it through a day safely without injury and then are able to work another day and our PPE will do that for us. A lot of different occupations need safety gear and construction is not much different. Police officers use safety gear, firemen use safety gear, hazmat people use safety gear, and construction is not as dangerous as say the bomb squad, but they also have gear that's designed to keep them safe. So first things first, let's talk about what I have on right here. It is a safety vest. This is clothing that has one purpose. It is not bulletproof, it's not magical, it is not a fashion statement. This is to keep me visible on a job site. So I am very visible, the colors are very bright, it has reflective tape. My vest is nice and shiny and new, super bright. When you're on a job site, you're doing dirty work a lot of times. These can dull out, so you need to wash them. And once they start to dull out, you're not as visible. So they're not a huge investment to protect your life. So make sure that it is in good condition. We have four categories of PPE protection we'll go over today. The first one is respiratory protection or protection for your lungs. Another one is eye and face protection, very important. The third one is skin protection. That's for all of the other skin on your body. The fourth one is hearing protection. I'm going to start with your clothing that you'll wear. And there's a few tips here. Most construction sites do not give you an exact dress code, but some of the rules to follow would be no extremely loose or baggy clothes. These can get caught up in power tools or other machinery that's moving and they can drag one of your limbs into that machine causing injury. Also, you should have some type of sleeved shirt. Exposed arms, that's exposing skin, that can lead to injury. I don't recommend shorts on a job site. Once again, you're exposing more bare skin and some contractors insist on long pants. As for shoes, your shoes should have a closed toe on them. No open-toed shoes, sandals, or flip-flops. This is a bad idea. That's your base level of rules. Of course, it gets more fancy than that. We can have specific gear that protects our feet. I've got a work boot here. This one's not that special. I grabbed the wrong one today when I was coming in, but it has a lot of the features that we can talk about when we're looking at work boots. It's got a heavy sole. That's good for a work site that's uneven, uh, good for gripping, staying solid on the surface. Another feature on a work boot would be a reinforced toe that could be either with steel or a composite reinforced toe that's going to protect your toe from a crush from a heavy object that could be anything from moving equipment to literally dropping something on your foot not all jobs require this toe protection it's sort of your personal choice it depends on what kind of work you're doing also there is heel protection so you'll have reinforcing plates in here that will help protect your heel the boot should be high this gives you ankle protection and there might even be a steel plate in the bottom that will prevent nails and other fasteners from piercing through the last thing to talk about is what not to wear and that would be any loose objects like jewelry hoodie strings headphones things like that once again these can get caught up in our equipment power tools that are moving and pull you in to injure you. Your eyes are super important and an eye injury can cause blindness. Safety glasses are really important for eye protection. They need to be worn at all times on the job site. And these are specially designed to protect against projectiles and chemicals. If you need a higher level of protection for your eyes, you might use a pair of goggles. These are going to seal around your face. I tend to find these get hot, they tend to fog up. But if you're using a grinder, you have metal shards flying or a lot of airborne debris, these work really well. If you need even more eye and face protection, you would go with a face shield. And I don't have one here, but as you can see, this is made of similar materials as your other safety glasses, but it's going to cover and protect your entire face. Safety glasses are designed and manufactured by certain specifications 
spelled out by an agency called ANSI. They will be not only shatterproof and ballistics tested, but also chemically resistant. This is important, and the way that we know that these are official are that they are stamped on the inside temple here with a Z87. That means it meets all of these specifications and that you can count on them to keep your eyes safe. A lot of people with glasses think that their glasses take the place of a set of safety glasses. That's just not true. As a matter of fact, if a projectile was to hit a pair of normal prescription glasses, they can shatter and cause even more injury to your eye than just the projectile itself. Safety glasses, once again, are shatterproof and ballistics tested. They will not crack and then send shards into your eye. So bottom line is, if you wear glasses, you have two choices. You can get what's called overs that are specially formed to fit over a pair of glasses. Now you're wearing two pairs at the same time, or you can spring for a more expensive pair and get a prescription pair of safety glasses that are Z87 certified. Safety glasses need to be taken care of. And one thing I tell people is don't lay them down on their lenses. They are shatterproof, but they're not scratch proof. As a matter of fact, it's very easy to scratch a pair of safety glasses. If you're wearing scratched glasses, you can't see, that can be even as dangerous as not wearing safety glasses at all. So have a case for them, keep them safe and clean. Don't throw them in the bottom of your bucket to just go bad. Better yet, keep them on your face all day and then put them in a case at night. Protection for your head is also very important. Any head injury is a serious one, and there's a lot of risk on a job site from flying or falling objects. A hard hat will protect you from those two hazards, and there are features of a hard hat that need to be there. One is the safety cage, and it is suspended inside of this shell. There's an air gap between the cage and the hard hat. There should not be anything in between. You don't store anything in here, and you can replace this cage when it goes bad. There is an adjustment on the back of this called a ratchet knob. This allows you to make it smaller or bigger to fit your head. There's a different version of this adjustment called a slip ratchet. You might be familiar with this on a baseball cap. Both of them allow you to fit this to your head properly. And a proper fit of a hard hat would be not too tight, but not too loose. And the trick here is because you're bending over up and down all day on the job site, you should be able to lean over without that hard hat falling off, right? So that is the key to a good fit. Another tip is to level the hard hat out on your head. And I've seen a lot of people sometimes attempt to wear their hard hat backwards, right? So you can reverse a hard hat if it's designed to do that. And there is a symbol on the inside of here that has a reverse donning feature on it. That means that this uh, cage here, which we can take out, can be reversed 180 degrees in this hard hat, which will push the brim into the back. So someone that appears to be wearing their hard hat backwards might not be as long as they do it officially. The key to a hard hat is always that adjustment feature, whether it's the ratchet or the slip ratchet, need to be in the back. Some people like to put stickers on their hard hat. So the rule is that you can cover your hard hat with stickers up to 40% of the surface area. That allows 60% to still inspect this hard hat, which you should be doing on a regular basis. The bottom line is take care of your hard hat and it'll take care of you. We're using our hands all day on the job site, so hand protection is a big deal. That could be anything from a lightweight work glove to a heavyweight demo work glove with padding on the knuckles for protection. Or if you need to protect yourself from something other than cuts and abrasions, that might be a chemical resistant glove like these nitrile gloves. I have a love-hate relationship with gloves. Whenever I'm doing very fine detail work, I tend to leave them off so I can do a better job. But whenever I'm moving materials, trying to keep splinters out of my hands, I've got my gloves on. One set of gloves doesn't take care of all the situations on a job site. A pair of work gloves won't protect your hands with chemicals. Chemical gloves won't do anything for you to protect your hands against splinters. So pick the right set of gloves. We need gear to protect our lungs. There's a lot of airborne particulate, that's dust, sawdust, uh, concrete dust, 
all of these things can damage your lungs. It might not be immediately. This could be long-term health problems that you run into. So you should think about the health of your lungs all day, every day. We use respirators to protect our lungs. And when I'm talking about a respirator, I'm not referring to a COVID-related protection. You need to follow whatever rules your employer and your jurisdiction uh, mandates for those. What we're talking about here is airborne particulates like dust and certain harmful vapors. So we have two different classes of respirators. One is a particulate or dust filtering mask, and the other is a vapor filtering mask. They look and operate very differently. You probably know an N95 mask because of this time of COVID. What that N95 means, it is 95% effective at filtering any dust-borne particulate that's in the air around you. The other kind of mask, a gas filtering respirator, is made specifically to fit and seal tightly around your face, and it has cartridges that are made for specific vapors. It will filter through not only dust, but also whatever specific vapors it's made for. All chemicals have SDS documentation available for them, some of them have harmful vapors and the vapors need to be covered by this specific filter on this mask. So not only does it have to fit well, it has to be designed for whatever specific chemicals you're trying to protect yourself from. Hearing protection is often overlooked and I don't really get it. I'm a musician. My ears are really important to me. The one thing to remember here is that a decibel level or noise level of 80 decibels or above that's prolonged will cause damage to your ears. And this damage can be cumulative. So over time, a power saw, certain heavy equipment at that noise level, if you don't protect your ears, will lead to hearing loss. That's really serious. If you look at this list on the presentation, you see a whole menu of job site related things. I put a separate list on the left here. These are some more common things. And look at the decibel levels of some of these items. You have an air compressor that runs at 70 decibels. And I'll tell you, I've been around some compressors that are much louder than that. A shot vac is at 80 decibels and you're approaching that dangerous threshold of damage to your ears. If you're cutting plywood with a typical circular saw, you're up to 110 decibels. Now you're well into that dangerous range. And consider some of the most common things that happen on a job site can cause hearing loss. And it doesn't have to be just you doing the work. If you're around somebody that's doing it, it's the same risk. And I'm harping on this a lot because it is so easy to solve. The PPE we need to do this will reduce the noise level of any noise by say, 30 decibels, right? That brings it down to a normal safe level. But even more importantly, it doesn't cut out uh, noise completely. So you can hear someone if they're calling out to you, which keeps you safe as well. We have a few different versions here. We have disposable separate earplugs or even disposable earplugs with a tether on them to keep them around your neck. We have this type with a tether on them. And we have a version which is an earmuff that will totally enclose each ear. So there you have it, some safety gear that will keep you safe and prevent injury on the job site. Very available, very affordable. And the good news is your employer will probably provide a lot of this for you when you go to work. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. <laughs>